Welcome back, everyone, to the Digital Currency Summit. I'm joined today by the Chief Revenue Officer of Squirrel Labs, Eric Pacini. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Swirl Labs is the group behind Hedera Hashgraph, in case you didn't know. So let's start there. Let's talk about what is Hedera, what's the Hashgraph that they're building there, and how Swirl is involved. Yeah, so um, maybe we start from the beginning. Yes. Which is always a good idea. I think uh, so. 2018, when uh, the co-founders of uh, Hedera, Mans and Lehman, started to build a Hashgraph and launch Mainnet, uh, there was one organization, and they did create a very unique platform from a technology point of view, uh, which has maybe the following three big differentiators. It's a layer one blockchain uh, with a very high throughput to 10,000 transactions per second. So very, very high. Uh, and the big uh, reason why I think it is exciting to be on Hedera is the cost of the transaction is always the same in dollar not in crypto. Mm. And so when you, when you build a, an, an enterprise grade solution or any kind of solution really, and you say, I'm gonna depend on the cost of the gas fee to run my business, it's a little bit difficult. But when you know that every transaction that you run on the blockchain is a fraction of a cent, today, tomorrow, in 10 years, then you can really build a business on the top of this, which is why I'm, I'm really excited about this. So that's one of the key differentiators. Um, and then the other differentiator is the, the, the focus on sustainability and ESG and the cost of a transaction because it's low and the cost to the planet of running the blockchain is also a fraction of what everybody else is doing. So those are the big differentiators of, of Hedera. Yeah. Um, in case you haven't been with us on previous DCS summits, we have Dr. Lehman Baird come on before and yeah. explain everything. One of the most intelligent men I've ever had the pleasure of listening to speak for anything. So I definitely have to go back and check that out. And if you haven't looked at Hedera's Hashgraph before, you absolutely have to. Um, if your thesis is betting on the smartest people in the room, a lot of them are Hedera. And a lot of them are working for Hedera's partners as well that originally got this network off the ground. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to some of your partners and what's next? Yeah, so I think you're touching on something that's also very unique about the governance of Hedera Hashgraph. Uh, when, when, when we started that project, I was not there, but when they started that project, uh, they, they said we need to have a, the ability for large organizations to participate from the get-go, from the beginning. And so now you have Google and Dell and IBM and Wipro and banks and supply chain companies operating the network themselves. It's a very unique governance model that really uh, Lehman designed from the beginning and said, we're gonna have all those organizations operating the network themselves. So they run a node, right? So each of them, each of those brands I mentioned are running a node on the header network. They run the network. So that creates a very different governing council, governing structure. Um, so all of them, we have 28 of, of them today. We are growing to 39 in the future. They are part of the ecosystem. So that's, I would say, the first, the first circle of, of the ecosystem. Then you have thousands of builders who are building on the top of the platform, right? Whether it's consumer engagement with loyalty and rewards, whether it's sustainability with carbon credits, with our guardian solution, uh, or it could be supply chain, it could be financial services, DeFi, ob obviously, but you have a lot of different uh, opportunities to build on the platform. And so as part of this, what we also created over time uh, in the context of decentralizing the, the, the ecosystem, uh, Hedera did create um, four different entities. Uh, the first one was a foundation, and the foundation is a grant giving organization. So the, the idea was, Let's activate the ecosystem by giving grants to startups and large organizations to start build, building on, on Edera. That was the first one. The second one was Thor of Labs. And they said, you know, in, in the spirit of decentralization, we're going to keep Hedera, which was no, number one, and we're going to create Thor of Labs to really run the code, run the marketing, run the operation, run the business of Edera, if you mm. want. The third one was the association, the Ashgraph Association. And the Algraph Association is also a grant giving organization with a different focus than the, um, the Herdera um, Foundation. 
uh, with, and the concept is uh, that you give grants to large organizations as opposed to small organizations. So association is really focused on enterprise adoption. And then we created the DLT Science Foundation uh, a few months ago, and wow. the DLT Science Foundation is also uh, activating you know, Hedera with uh, an education mindset, right? So the idea is to educate the market, not just on Hedera, by the way, on everything blockchain, um, but the, we were giving, we, were, we gave them a grant for, uh, to start the company. So different pieces, all of that in the spirit of activating an ecosystem and also decentralizing the treasury of, of Hedera. I think that's so brilliant, and I'm not surprised that it's coming from you guys, um, as you've been pioneering so many different things. But I think one of the biggest shortfalls of many projects is they don't focus on the education part of it, and they leave it to the developers to do the marketing, to do the education, to do the business development, and mm -hmm. look, that's not their skill set. Yeah. Coders are supposed to code, biz devs should do biz dev, marketing mm -hmm. should market, but there's this huge missing gap of education about just simply what you're building over here mm -hmm. and making awareness to shine a light on all this amazing stuff that's being built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've talked with other ecosystems and ecosystem funds and they're like, yeah, we don't really see a reason for that. We'll let the projects do that. And I'm like, oh, you're missing the most critical keystone in the bridge you're trying to yeah, build. You, you have to invest. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think our mindset, which is I think also a difference from other projects, is that we are building for the next hundred years, not for the next two, not for the next five, the next hundred years. So we are really setting the stage for a long-term play where we believe that the fabric of the world is going to run on blockchain platforms, on Edera, obviously, but that is a long-term play. So long-term play means, to your point, education, the right tools for developers to build, the right support when they need it. You know, Alpha of World Labs is developer support, activities, advocates, right? They are all over the world to support the ecosystem because we believe in the long-term value. Yeah, and that, you know, n proven by your early partners, like the, the names you mentioned that are enormous. Um, and I think having that really professional early governance was mm -hmm. such a wise idea, seeing how many other uh, program or projects now are starting out with a decentralized governance, and you have a very amateur community coming in whose incentives are not aligned mm -hmm. in, with each other or with developers mm -hmm. or anything, and there's like this early tug of war over like this newborn baby mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus, you know, you have these professional corporations that know how to build long term. Correct. Uh, and are going to see the consequences of their actions. And yeah. they don't want to fight with each other. They want to work together. Yeah, yeah. So now that's happened, but that's not the entire grand vision. The grand vision is now further decentralization of this network and inviting more and more participants to come in. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that process. and how you're going to go about it. So we, I mentioned the different buckets already. Yes. Uh, and I think what, what the, the plan is really is to increase the size of the council, so 28 to 39, as quickly as we can, but not with anyone. We want to build that with the right industry players, right? So we want to make sure that we can represent the different segment of the world, right? In, in the pharma, for example, in, you know, we have banking already. Uh, do we need more supply chain? Do we need more, you know, core businesses around the globe that we want to uh, embark onto onto the platform? Energy. We don't have a lot of energy focused. Mm. You know, I'm thinking about the big energy companies, uh, or, and you know, we have sustainability play, but we also need the energy players to to bring their their own activities. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the the number one focus for us is to increase the size of the cancer. And the number one focus, number two focus, is to grow the ecosystem with additional capabilities on the top of what we do. So one topic we are really excited about is called DREC, um, decentralized recovery. Right. So one of the big challenges in crypto is if you lose your keys, you lose your yeah. assets. Right. And so again, Dr. Lehman Baird came up with an idea a year ago, I think now. Uh, saying, he, you know, I found a way to do decentralized recovery, so I'm going to share a portion of my secrets with people I trust around me. Mm. I know I'm not sharing my private key, so they cannot act on my behalf, Right. but I'm going to be able to deliver that um, secret to many of them. And if I lose my keys, they're going to be able to recover my keys for me, and I can recover my assets. That's a game changing in crypto. Because today, I think that's one of the main limitations why people don't start their crypto journey as an enterprise, for example, because they are afraid of losing 
their public key, their private key. Uh, and so the reason I'm mentioning that is because one, we are excited and we want to launch that with all the blockchain projects, not just us, because it's a really a concept that we should all adopt. And then the second piece is it's going to generate more decentralization because now you have more people coming to the ecosystem, more people engaging with HBAR, which is our token, and then now they have uh, access to additional tokens, additional capabilities, and we continue to decentralize the network. There's been something I've been wondering pretty much ever since I got into crypto five years ago, and I know many out there are wondering as well, how does a decentralized company or a component of a project make a revenue other than a short-term idea where they raise money, the tokens are vested, they dump them and they move on. But if you're going to be around for 100 years, that's not the approach you're going to take. So how does you know, Swirled Labs make revenue? How does you know, DLT Science make revenue? Yeah, and, and so maybe I'll use the analogy I use often about you know, the, the, the decentralized uh, uh, entities we created over the last few months and years. Yeah. Right? Um, so Hedera was kind of the core, and then we had four college kids who left the house, mm -hmm. and they have four years to graduate and start generating their own revenue right. in four years, right? So that's where we are. So we are building a channel and a, a pipeline of additional ways to generate revenue on the top of the platform, uh, all of us, not just for that. Right. Uh, and it's focused on a few things. One is additional software that we are building on the top, and we would offer that as a service mm. for a fee, okay. right? And it could be around ESG, it could be around tokenization, it could be around loyalty and rewards, and we would do that with uh, our ecosystem players, right? That's number one. Number two is we realize that large organizations need support to adopt those technologies, and they're going to get that from large-scale uh, organizations like the one we have on the council, IBM, Wipro, and others, but they also need very specific techn technology expertise, and we can make revenue by selling that expertise to them. So right. it's kind of like the Red Hat model. It could be, exactly. I was about to say Got that. it. Um, I, you know, I was with IBM before. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. I, I, I know exactly how it works. Uh, and that's very similar to this. Uh, and you can build a really profitable and sustainable business on, on this model. Uh, and then the third one is actually to invest ourselves into the ecosystem and support, not just by giving grants, but by um, um, getting equity in the companies we're building on the top of the platform and then generating revenue over time. So those are the, you know, the big ideas we have. Uh, it's in the process of getting there. We have not graduated from college yet, so we are in the process of doing this. But you're right, it's very important to think about sustainability of the project because the last thing you want is five years from now running out of tokens and then have to shut down everything because we don't have tokens. Of course we don't want to do that. No one yeah. wants to get there, right? Yeah. yeah, well, there you go. I mean, there's an actual plan in place to be sustainable for 100 years or longer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just talk. So uh, yeah. I love hearing that. It's a multi-strategy, multi-vertical approach. So yeah. um, if you're going to bet on anyone in this space, i definitely take a, a much deeper look at Hedera. Um, full disclosure, I don't have any, but I love talking to these you guys. You should. <laughs> I, yeah, you know, um, maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I should. You know, it's been something I've been following you know, ever since you know, 2017 when you guys yeah. had your ICO. and. Just been kind of watching and waiting, and thinking, you know, maybe I'll get on the council someday, and maybe that'll be how I get involved because I, I love running nodes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. who knows what the future may hold? Yeah. Um, but everyone at your team that I've met, I think six or seven people now, is just yeah. awesome. It is, it is an awesome team, yeah. yeah. Aside from just what you're working on, what really excites you about this industry as it matures? So, I've been in this industry for 10 years. Wow. Uh, I, I, in 2013, I was at Deloitte. And I started with some friends um, at Deloitte the, the blockchain practice, right? And then we grew that practice to a significant size today. I think Deloitte today is a very good brand. And the, the foundation of, of this, this, the start of, of this journey was the realization that the world is going to com be completely different from a business point of view, not just from a consumer engagement point of view, you know, NFTs and crypto, but from a business point of view, it's going to be different because now we have access to this technology. And um, when I say business, I mean cooperation, but I mean also the business of helping people, the business of including people into financial services, the, the, the business of you know, providing aid in the right place at the right time and tracking that. Uh, so it's, it's business in the, with a big B, right? Not just corporation and profit making. 
Uh, that's what excites me. And I think we have, not just Hedera, but as an industry, we have a responsibility to make sure that technology that is really different is actually making its way to make an impact to the world. That's what excites me. That's why I'm here. Um, I'm not here to make a lot of money. Um, I don't, everybody wants to make a lot of money, but I'm here because I think there is a responsibility that we have to generate impact to the world with that, that technology. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And when you're impact focused, money just comes along the way. Yeah, I think it's the, the side effect of yes. making an impact. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And as I've been able to travel the world the past couple of years, I find more and more investors and builders are coming together with that mindset. Mm -hmm. So despite the dark times that we're living in today, I feel like the light at the end of the tunnel has never been brighter. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Well, where can we follow you in the Hedera Hashgraph Association and Swirled Labs and keep tabs on everything you guys are doing? So, uh, I mean, we here at Consensus, we have a big booth. We have, I think, 50 people all over the place wow. uh, talking in different places. Uh, some couldn't make it because they are talking to regulators and uh, um, authorities in DC right now. Uh, and we have we have a very good connection with them. So um, that's that's why some of us are not going to be here. Uh, but uh, Hedera.com, where we have all the ecosystem, all the different plays. Uh, Swervelabs.com, we are on Twitter everywhere, on LinkedIn, obviously. So a lot of ways to engage with us. But uh, jo join us, join, join our community, because um, you can build something that's predictable, that's efficient, and that's good for the planet. So join us. Fantastic. And where yeah. can people follow you for more of your insights? And Rants and raves. So in the last few weeks, I haven't been very active because we we, we are really busy. Sure. But uh, yeah, on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, I'm I'm there. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Very excited to see what continues to come out of yeah. the Hedera ecosystem, and we'll look forward to having you back on next year. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with another great guest here at the DCS.